According to the Brick Fanatics list, 63 sets are coming out tomorrow on lego.com. They've been on the coming soon page for the last few weeks. And I thought to myself, there can't be a better time than right now to give you my investment predictions on how they will do in retirement. So I'm gonna go through each set with you and give you my way, way too early investment grade. I don't have a table and I'm not gonna show you any tables in this video and I'm sure you all are thinking, what? And I know, I know that feels wrong, but we're going to let our hair down, cut loose, run amok, horse around, live it up, have a whale of a time and have a night on the tiles. And yes, I did have to look that last one up. In a few years, I will very likely make a video where we watch back this video and I give myself grades on how well my predictions were. So let's kick off with the theme that we are most interested, which is Star Wars right here. And we are going to go straight to the big set, Yavin 4 Rebel Base set 75365. Price is a hundred sixty nine ninety nine for 1,066 pieces. Here's a look at the spin and first impressions, not very good. I admittedly can't stop looking at the horrendous tree, but blocking that out because you can remove that. Everything else is also a disappointment. It's just too open and too much of a shell and overall thin looking. To do a little bit of side by side comparison, this is a shot from the movie and that's what the Yavin 4 Rebel base is supposed to look like. Going back to the Lego set, just a lot of gaps up on the top, a lot of gaps through the middle even. And I get they wanna have the shooters and everything, but it's just way too open. And then the bay for the Y-wing to fly through is totally fine, but even that's a little big, and I wish there was a way to close that up and have some good exterior detailing on it. This also is just way too open for me, and that tree <laughs> looks terrible. Very small space to work with. That looks decent, that's a sticker. Most of the decorations in this set are stickers. C-3PO is being helpful as always. And I mentioned that I really don't like this tree. <laughs> But with that said, the minifigures are pretty good. There are 12 in total, which is the most that we've had in a set at this price point. And I think over a decade, I didn't look it up, but it's been a long time. Looking at them from left to right, we have Luke and Han with their detachable medals, which is pretty nice. Both of these are new versions of the characters. Princess Leia is exclusive to this set. General Dodonna looks good, but is the same figure here in the X-Wing Starfighter. Red Leader and Gold Leader look really, really good. Red Leader's helmet is a new print and a lot of great detail. Those two minifigures, if they are very crisp in their production, are very nice looking minifigures. Chewbacca is old hat. The C-3PO minifigure with the arm printing is the same that we get in the trash compactor diorama. R2-D2 is old hat, but does have printing in the back. And then the gray astromech is R2-BHD. That looks really good, but unfortunately there is no printing on the back. And then the Fleet Trooper, which is exclusive to this set, which looks really good. And then the last figure is the Rebel Crew, which looks fine, but it's kind of plain. In summary, poor design, poor look, good minifigures. Minifigures will have to be highly sought after if this set has any chance in retirement. So therefore, I am giving this set a 1.0. And to explain my scale, it's the same zero to three scale that I use for the enthusiasm scores on all of my other videos. Typically, anything two and above is considered considered a pretty good score. Next up is Yoda's Jedi Starfighter, and I give this an investment score of zero. There is nothing special about the minifigures, and we had almost an exact same set come out in 2017. At already over a five year hold time, it is only doing about $50 and the retail price was 25. The new one is 35 with only 253 pieces. So hard pass for me. Third Star Wars set is the Mandalorian N1 Starfighter Micro Fighter. This set is 88 pieces, technically two minifigures, one and a quarter. <laughs> 
my opinion, because that baby Grogu is a tiny little guy that we've got many times. But now this micro fighter is $15.99, $6 jump. I don't see six more dollars of value in this set. Therefore, this set, I also give a zero for an investment score. Please let me pause and say for a moment that these are the way, way too early investment predictions. I am not a financial advisor. This video is purely for fun and entertainment. Many things between now and when these sets retire, including shelf life, the economy, the Lego market, and many other critical variables could change between now and then, and of course, any time after you buy the set and until you actually make the sale. All right, I want to throw that in there. I gave you my best legal speak. Next set up is the spider tank. Apparently this set is still coming out. If I were Lego, I would cancel it today and not even bring it out. I give this an investment score of zero, obviously. Yeah, the Bo-Katan minifigure is cool, but if you are watching the video, enough said. If you are just listening to this video, trust us when we tell you, you don't wanna see what this set looks like. And now the first of the highly anticipated Star Wars mech sets that we are all extremely enthusiastic about. This one is the Stormtrooper mech, 138 pieces, one minifigure, and $16. I am slightly okay with this set. Overall, I think it actually looks kind of cool. The minifigure, ooh, the back there doesn't look good, but the minifigure Stormtrooper inside this mech looks pretty decent. I can see a lot of kids enjoying this set, and I can see a lot of folks that build large armies saying, you know what, we need to have a couple of large Stormtrooper mechs kind of like bringing in the cavalry you know the big guys up on horse pack ready to go so i'm not a total hater on this set i'm gonna give it an investment score right now of 1.5 out of three the boba fett mech this is by far my favorite and i think everybody else's favorite mech of the three and this one actually looks pretty good i can totally believe boba fett being in a mech flying around larger than life the character is already larger in life portrays a personality that could have his own exosuit or exoskeleton and so therefore i'm okay with the mech and the back actually looks pretty good too with the rocket and the jetpack same 16 dollars for 155 pieces but the biggest selling point is this boba fett minifigure that minifigure is exquisite and is everything exactly perfect is it kind of a blend of a few different boba fett's sure but just looking at it we all know what the figure is i am impressed with everything from head to toe notice the toe printing too and the arm printing i am very excited about that minifigure and overall i am pretty excited about this set i'm gonna give it a way way too early investment score of 2.6 and the last Star Wars mech is this Darth Vader. I give this one an investment score of 0.5. I can handle a Stormtrooper and Boba Fett mech, but not Darth Vader. He stands alone. He doesn't need a mech. He doesn't belong in a mech. He would force choke the first person that offered that to him. But to some extent on all three mechs, I did just highlight how a lot of people are turned off by these. And so maybe they don't sell that well and sometime down the road, people are gonna look back and say, eh, you know, I kinda wish I had some of them. So it's possible that there could be very, very low supply on the secondary market after these retire. It'll be really interesting to see how long they are on the shelves for. And the last Star Wars set coming out tomorrow is the 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack. It is $20 for the four minifigures and the Swamp Speeder in the Mandalorian colors, which is kind of cool. And for a battle pack, that little side build, the Swamp Speeder is halfway decent. You can get two of the Clone Trooper minifigures in there, and it looks pretty good. Again, super small scale. We know that with the battle packs. But there are a couple of major issues with this set. Number one, the Captain Vaughn minifigure is so close to exactly the same as the other three clone troopers in this set. There is one tiny little insignia print on his top left chest area. And of course he has the orange visor that clips into the helmet holes that we will talk about in a second. At that rate, if Captain Vaughn is gonna be so similar, which is not accurate at all to the Captain Vaughn in the source material, then just have them all be 332nd clone troopers. It's a battle pack. People want these to mass clone troopers. A lost use of of a minifigure when people pick up multiples of this set. The other issue is the 
helmet holes, dun dun dun. The clone trooper minifigures are the exact same as the one in this set from a couple of years ago, the armored assault tank. However, this clone trooper does not have the new helmet that is wider in the ears because they had to have enough plastic and thickness for those helmet holes. And so now with the new minifigure, it's the exact same, but the helmet is a little bit worse. I'm not getting crazy wound up about it, but I certainly certainly am disappointed by it and I think it's going to hurt some desirability of this set. It seems like we are in a dip putting in the extra details to get the right finished product as compared to the source material and it just feels like there are some corners being cut and yeah when you look at these minifigures they look great but then when you look at them a little deeper we can see that there are some flaws that really wouldn't have been difficult for Lego to get accurate. Clone troopers are always highly sought after and battle packs are typically typically highly sought after. Balancing that out with the issues that this set has, I think makes it very, very difficult to make a way, way too early investment. Great, I do like the blue jetpacks. So the best I can do on this set is a, for me, somewhat disappointing 2.2, which is still an overall good score, but for a Star Wars battle pack that is clone troopers, I think that's a little bit lower than I would have originally anticipated, but it just feels like some of the buzz around the battle packs lately has started to wear off a little bit. So I'm going to be a little bit conservative, I think, on that score and settle with the 2.2. 2.2. All right, timeout. I am calling an audible. I just looked at the clock and I am already 11 minutes in and I've only talked about the Star Wars sets so far. As most of you already know, I definitely like to talk a lot. And so if I don't break this up into two videos, then this video is going to run on forever. So I'm stopping this video right here with just these Star Wars sets. And tomorrow I will have another video that does the exact same way too early investment score and analysis for all of the other themes and sets. Thanks for watching. That's a wrap on this video. And I will see you same time and same place tomorrow tomorrow.